this place. We come before you and we honor you and we bless you. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do today. God, I pray that you would just begin to speak to each and every heart. God, that you would open our heart, our eyes, our mind to receive from you what you wish for us to receive and to be illuminated by the Spirit to your word. And everybody in the house said, amen, amen and amen. Why don't you turn around and hug three people before you have a seat? Come on. Tell them you're glad to see them. It's a party. It's going to be a good day. Welcome to church. You made it. That's a big deal. That's good. That's good. What a loving family we are. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This will be a beautiful Sunday. I'm so glad that you've chosen to start your week out right. Come on, you made it to church, and that's a big deal. Come on, you could have woke up in a hospital bed this morning, but you're here. Come on. I've, I've always, I always have this exercise when I'm feeling a little doom and gloom and despair over my own life. I always think about how blessed I really am. You ever do that? How blessed I really am. You know, because the truth is we can get pretty short-sighted when things aren't going our way. Wish things were different. And listen, let me just tell you, everybody under the sound of my voice, we all have problems. Come on. We all have issues. There's not a single person in this building who woke up and didn't have something they needed to work on, whether it be at their job or at their house or in their family, whatever that looks like. We all, and, and what happens is we can get really short-sighted on problems, and problems that really aren't that big can feel really big because our perspective is so close. And the reality is that sometimes we have to take a step back and we have to say, you know what? I need to look at how blessed I really am. David did this throughout the Psalms, right? He, he, would, he would talk to God, and he would kind of complain, and he would be like, I, Lord, I just wish you'd deal with my enemies. One of my favorite Psalms is when David's like, God, just break their teeth. Like, I don't, I, I don't know what, whatever you want to do, like, just break their teeth. And if you're having dental issues and you're in here... Uh, somebody's praying for you. I don't know. Uh, but, I, I, but then he, he would go from there to where then he would kind of transition and be like, but Lord, you are higher than all things and good. And, and he would bless the Lord. And sometimes we have to do that. And, and so when we show up in a place like this, this is a really a place where we get to celebrate. Come on. This is a place where we don't have to bring our issues. Come on. We don't have to bring our problems in here. Even though they do come with us, we can leave those at the door because this is a place where we get to gather and celebrate the goodness of God on our lives. Come on. It's a good place to be. And I always say it this way, we like to celebrate what we anticipate. And what that means is, like, there is an anticipation. Scripture talks about it. There's an anticipation. The whole earth groans for the coming of the Lord. Well, we get to show up in a place like this where we are anticipating a move of God every single week. Come on. We believe it's going to happen. And, and so what we're doing is we're just banging our drum. Come on. I'm just going to, li listen, if, if I don't got, if I can't find anything to celebrate. I can celebrate that I'm still breathing. Pastor John, how many, how many of y'all enjoyed Pastor John last week? Wasn't that great? Come on. Come on. Yeah. I'll let him know. Yeah. He, he did an incredible job, but he made a statement that really struck a lot of people in their heart. And he said, if, if you're still breathing, God's not done with you yet. And even if, even if all I have is my breath, come on, I can celebrate. Now, that was free preaching, just so you know. I didn't even plan on doing that, so that was a free one to you. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get started uh, in our service. I, I have a video I want you to watch, and so just hang tight, check out this video, and then we'll transition to our next part. I was excited. I volunteered to go into the military. I was, I was gun ho 19-year-old kid, wanted to serve my country. surprised me the most is the resilience of our guys, the tenacity, the, 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 the guts that uh, these young kids under some horrible conditions. I was always amazed at how we just uh, kept trucking along and doing what we knew we had to do. God had been so great to me. He got me through some some severe combat things. I mean, rockets flying over you and bullets and things of that nature. You know, a lot of my friends, my friends, they didn't come back. 
the agreement that we made with the NATO alliance is that uh, we're not bringing any Bibles, any crucifixes, anything like that. We can't bring anything of religious uh, Christianity uh, into Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. He said, but I'm going to allow you to bring your Bible because I know your, your background and I, I feel you're sincere. So we started having church services. Then the next week we had a service and then another service and another service. And a couple of days before the ground war, I was having a service at the Kuwait board. We had 2,500 people at this service. They said it's the largest Christian service recorded in the history of Saudi Arabia. We had Saudis, Kuwaitis, different countries were in the service. They showed it on CNN. My dad saw me on TV. We are the citizens. You need to understand that there have seen things and witnessed things that no human being ever cares to see or witness again. I had one who was apologizing to me for being around. apologizing to me and uh, he's saying I'm sorry sir I'll uh, I'll do better next time when I get better I'll come back I'll, I'll make you proud and I told him I, uh, I am proud and he died just minutes later Can we honor our veterans? We, uh, we're going to take a moment to honor our veterans this morning. We're, so, we're going to honor Veterans Day coming up this next Friday, but we wanted to take this Sunday to honor each and every uh, veteran that has served. And if that's you, if you're here, you've served in the military, we want to we want to recognize you, put you on the spot for just a second. Can we do that? Would you stand for us so that we can honor you? Come on, church. Let's honor our vets. We're thankful for your service. It's an honorable thing. Thank you so much. Praise God. Well, thank you guys for being here today. We, we pray that this will be a, a blessed day for you and your family and a good week. Uh, I'm excited about... Uh, this service, uh, I, let me, let me kind of just throw this out there. I think, I don't know this, I think I have ADHD, I'm not sure, um, because I, all week I've been thinking about next week's message, not this week's message, and, and I'm really having a hard time not preaching next week's message today, but we're going to, we've got this message prepared, I feel like this is what the Lord wants me to preach, and so that's what we're going to do, but I will say this, if you are a person who feels like you struggle every single day with an issue that you just cannot like get over. Like it's it's something that you struggle with on the daily. You don't want to miss next week. I promise you, you do not want to miss next week. It's going to be an incredible, incredible message. But today's message is just as good. We're in a sermon series called I Love My Church. And how many, how many in here you love your church? Come on, you just love your church. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if you're here today, and I, I saw some new faces, aren't we excited about our new faces? Come on, we're, we're so glad you joined us. We honor you. Listen, it, it don't take long to fit in here. Just, just show up. You're here. We're, we're glad about it. And, uh, and listen, we are, we are a church who has a hyper focus on reaching people for Jesus. And this is a church, this, last week we talked about that we want this to be a church where all, like, you can come and experience the supernatural. Come on. Well, last week we kind of talked about that. We want this to be a supernatural place. And, and this week we're going to kind of talk about uh, something that I feel like Everybody in here uh, 
absolutely like you love. Okay, you talk about it. And, uh, and everyone in here, you, everybody here loves some kind of music. How many people in here, you, you've got some kind of music? I'm, I'm kind of a Frankenstein when it comes to music, okay? Like, like we just had Halloween, so let's work that in, Frankenstein. Y'all don't catch it. That's okay. Um, I'm kind of, like, like, I like all, like, there are some people, like, they're, they're country music people. You ever meet these people? They're just... Yeehaw, yeehaw, yeehaw. They don't listen to nothing but country music. And, and if you turn on anything else, they're like, what's wrong with you? Turn on my country. You know, like, don't touch that person's radio. Hey, is, is my mic acting funny? Should it, can we get, like, a, maybe a head handheld and try to work on this later? Because Okay, all right. Yeah, it's driving me crazy. Okay, so, so is that better? That sounds, feels like y'all fixed it. Um, the, uh, so you got those kind of people. Like, they're, they're just all about country music. Um, or they're like all about like 80s rock. How many people in here, like you listen to 80s rock, hair metal, all that stuff? Yeah, 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 very good, very good. We, we all love all kinds of music. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of like a Frankenstein. Like I, like I like country, I like classic country, and if you don't know who Hank Williams Jr. is, you don't know what classic country is? Come on, somebody. Uh, I, like, I like rap, I like R&B, I like jazz, I like classical, I like Christian music, right? I like, I like all of it. I like all of it, and 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 and, and, and I'm not even gonna say it. Sometimes I say this. I'm not gonna say it, but sometimes I say this, and it makes a bunch of Christians mad. But I say this: there's no such thing as Christian music because music can't be saved. I'm just playing. Come on, listen, listen to me. Uh, there's so so you have like all these different kinds of music. I love music, and in fact, you probably have some kind of song. Or, or music that you listen to, and, and you love that music. And music is, is incredible because music can just change your mood. Like you can be feeling one way, and you get in the car and start turning on some music and, and get the right vibe going, and it seems like everything, like the atmosphere just changes. That happens even even like in, in a church service. Like you can you have kind of like a, a church service, and it's kind of flat, 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 and then worship kicks off like we did this morning. By the way, didn't they do great this morning? Very thankful for them. Listen. What you don't know is they took that all on the fly. Last night, we, uh, the, the guy that was going to lead our stuff like broke his hand, and so he wasn't able to be here to lead that. And, and so, listen, we're, we're thank- I, I love this church because we have people who can just step in and fill a gap, and that's a big deal. Can we celebrate that? Come on, that's a big deal. Um, so thank you guys for being here. Uh, but we all have different kinds of music, and you can like, kind of walk in, and like the worship service kicks off, and all of a sudden, it, something in the atmosphere just changes. Music, music is incredible. In fact, some of you, the reason you're here today is because of music, because of like mood music, and somebody, your mama, and, and, and there was music, and now you're here, right? Like it changes <laughs> the mood. Y'all kind of caught that after a little late. That was, that was good, though. But, but music changes the mood. And, when, and, and, and here's the thing. I, I remember back in the day, like one of the things I love to do is, is something I've picked up. I used to do it all the time. I've just started doing it again is I like to run. I'm, I'm a big runner. I like, to, I like to walk and then like progressively into my run, right? And, uh, and so one of the things I do is I'll go to like, uh, like a gym and, and run on their treadmill or I've, I've got a treadmill at home or sometimes I like to go like to the park and 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 I remember when like when we first started working out like like I'm talking back in the day okay like I remember one Christmas I was like in fifth grade my parents bought us like like we got up you know Christmas morning we're expecting just tons of presents under the tree and we get up and all there is is a square long cardboard box and 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 I was like is this it and they were like yeah it's a together gift for you and your brother and there was nothing else legitimately nothing else and we opened it up and it was a weight bar 45 pound weight bar and they bought us a weight set for Christmas worst Christmas gift ever just so you know mom if you're listening to this what were you thinking but it was uh, it was it was and, and one of the things we like to do is when we would work out, is we would listen to like a boom box. Y'all remember boom box or jam box? Y'all remember one of those? And we would, we would like listen to the music 
on the radio while we worked out. And I love good, like, driving music when I work out. I, I like it to hit hard while because I feel like I get a better workout when I do it. In fact, when I go, like, to the park or when I, like, I used to go to the gym in my, in my uh, last town I kind of lived in, I'd go to the gym, and, and people would come up to me, and they'd say, Pastor, Pastor, can we, can we talk? And I would be like, no, we cannot talk because I'm focused. People always thought I was really mad. I'm not mad. I'm just focused because I'm in the zone, and I'm trying to get this workout done. And and we all love different kinds of music. And, and how many of y'all, when you like, like grew up, you had to listen to music on the radio, and that was kind of like you had the 8-track player. Y'all remember the 8-track? Come on. Yeah. You got some, yeah, yeah, good. Some of y'all are like, I don't want to raise my hand. But yeah. Uh, well, how many of y'all remember uh, this? How many in here had one of these? The Sony Walkman. Yeah, yeah. Remember the one with the orange ear pads? Come on, right, right there. Y'all remember that one? That's a stereo type, yeah. But, but they, they invented a personal music device, and you could listen to this. And, and, and what I loved about one of these is I love being able to put my headphones in. And, and here's the deal. You, did you know, this is a trick. I'm going to share something with you. Like if you got to go to the store and you're feeling a little introverted, you can take some headphones. You ain't even got to plug them in. You just put them in your ear. Nobody will bother you. I'm serious. I'm serious. And so, I, I, listen, I love this invention right here. But, but here's the thing. How many of y'all know, like, you got this, and if you had the Walkman, like, you were a, like, you, it, it kind of had some status with it. Like, this was a big deal. And, like, if you walked into the gym with those orange headphones on, people were like, oh, man, look at that guy. Look at that girl. They're serious about what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, wow. They're, they must really uh, be interested. And then after the Sony Walkman, they, they came out with uh, CDs. Y'all remember CDs? And, and so they had the CD player. This is the one I had, RCA. How many of you had a, a CD player like this? And, 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 and you had a CD player, but you remember when they first came out? They, they sucked. Why? Did, why? Anybody know? Anybody? They skipped. Like you'd be like, you'd be like trying to run, and it was terrible, right? And, 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 and if you had a CD player, and then they fixed the kind of the CD player thing, because it was kind of like, you know, it, it was skipped, and then they fixed it, and, and then that was kind of the status. Like if you had a CD player, man, you were, you were moving on to something better, uh, and, and if you still had a Walkman, people would be like, you're still wearing a Walkman? I got a CD player, right? And then after the CD player... They came out with this. This is, an, this is an iPod. This is the first iPod. How many had the first iPod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you, could, you could fit a thousand songs onto this iPod, right? Like this was a big deal. In fact, you could, you could put a thousand songs on this and, and it was like everybody had to have one and it was the thing to have. And, and so once they came out with this, what, what, like if you were still wearing the Walkman or you still had the CD player, everybody was kind of like, what is wrong with you? Now, here's the deal. If you still have one of these today, you're a collector. Can we be honest? Like, like you're, you're just, you're like this, this is really not good enough because the world has offered us something better to have, right? Like, like what, what we used to have when we first got it, like when we first got the Walkman, that was, that was awesome. Like you thought, man, this is enough. I'm happy with this. And the CDs came out and, and all of a sudden the Walkman wasn't good enough and you needed something better and so you got the cd player and then that one wasn't good enough because it skipped and so you got the anti-skip cd player right i remember having one of those and i got the anti-skip one and i was so excited because when i'd ride home on the bus i could listen to my wow 1999 jesus freak cd anybody had that one come on wow 1999 what would people do if they knew i was jesus freak and instead of skipping the whole way home on that bumpy bus ride i could just listen all the way home man i thought it was the coolest thing and and then they came out with these and 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 all of a sudden, my CD player wasn't good enough. What the world offered us when it came to like personal digital listening devices wasn't good enough, and I needed something more. And so I was like, gotta get the iPod. And then after the iPod, everything changed because we got the iPhone. The iPhone. Y'all remember this iPhone? How many in here had that iPhone? I never got, I never got the, I got the next version, the 3G. And, 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 and we've all kind of switched to this. Like if you love Jesus 
and you have an iPhone. Some people have an Android and they need to get saved. That's okay. We love you still. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing out on. But I, I'm just saying, we got, like, 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 here's the thing. What's interesting about the iPhone is this is how we have started consuming music now. Like, like when, the, when the Walkman first came out, you had the, the tape, you put the tape in, or you listened to the radio, and it was very limited on what you could do. And then compared to something like this, you would never go back to the Walkman because the Walkman is no longer good enough, even though one day that was what everyone had to have. And now what we have is the iPhone. And you can, listen, you can download a song in like three seconds on one of these bad boys. And, but, but here's the interesting. I looked it up, and from the sources I could find, since the first iPhone came out, okay, the first iPhone came out, there was 34 different versions of the iPhone since the first one came out, right? And so the, the n- next one we have is, I'm always losing mine, right here. I, I got this one. It's not the newest version, but I listen to my music on this, and, I, and, I, and, it, and it is good enough until the new one comes out, right? How many in here are you like, I got to get the new iPhone? Like, you're that person. Like, as soon as it goes out, yeah, yeah, you're like, I got to get it. I got to get it. It's the iPhone. Well, but here's the thing. I think, I think sometimes we all do this. Like, this is like with music and personal listening devices, but we all do this in our lives. Like, when we get something and we're really excited about it, it's like the new thing. And everybody is going to get it. And then you see your friend has the newer model. Let's talk about it, right? Like, like, like your house. Like when you first got your house, you loved your house. You were excited about your house until you went over to your friend's house. Um, or I have a story about a TV. One time I, my, my wife went out and bought me a big TV. I was so proud of my big TV. It was a big TV. It was so exciting. We had just got married. I was like, I got a big TV. got a big TV. It was only like 42 inches. But I was like, to me, it was a big TV. I was like, look at this. Look how thin it is. And then I went over to my buddy's house, and he had like a 70-inch. And his was even thinner than my TV. And all of a sudden, I went home, and I was watching my TV, and I was like, can't even really, like, this ain't even good enough. Right? Like, like, it's not good enough. Y'all ever been there? Like, we do that. With like, like, like your car. Like, when you first got your car, my goodness, it was the best car. You loved your car. No better air conditioner than your car. No better radio listening than your car. It was the biggest, safest car. And then you saw the newer model. Come on. And you're like, I got to get that newer model. And, and we all do this. But I think what happens is we also do this in our walk with Jesus. Is because where we, we start out at one place in our relationship with him, and it's not really him who makes us not feel good enough, but it's other people. Can we be honest? Other people. And, and if you want to find out, just to ask somebody, hey, am I good enough? They'll let you know. I promise you. There's somebody will let you know that you're not, okay? And, and it's not really him, but it's, it's sometimes it's other people who make us feel like we're not good enough. And, and, and so today, I want to talk about being good enough, that, that, that at one time, you were on fire in your relationship with Jesus. At one time, you, you had a ministry plan At one time, you had a vision of what God wanted to do with your life. Uh, At one time, and and at the time, that was exciting. That was fun. That was was the thing. But then it, it stopped feeling new. And what often happens is when our relationship with Jesus no longer feels new, we think there's something wrong with us. And we get maturity, come on, We get maturity confused with something being wrong. Come on. And so today I want to talk to you about, now now, here's the thing, if you have like you're a Bible history guy or you have any kind of Bible background, you're going to, you're going to recognize the guy that we're going to talk about today. And uh, his name is the rich young ruler. How many of you have heard this story? I'm I'm excited about preaching this uh, scripture to you uh, because I've never seen it. Some things that the Lord pointed out that I've never seen, and I want to share that with you today. So, so can we pray real quick and kind of just hone our minds in, Father, right now in the name of Jesus? I pray that you would speak to each and every one of us. God, help me preach this message fast so we're not here until 12 o'clock. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. All right, cool. As Jesus, listen to this, I kind of lost you there. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, would you listen to this? A man came running up to him. This guy's like jogging, right? knelt down and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit 
eternal life. Now, let me ask you a question. You ever, you ever met somebody that's putting on a show? In fact, let me, let me, let me just go a little further. Did you know we can put on a show at church? Right? Like, 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 for example, let me, let me talk about this real quick. How many, like, like, let's talk about hand raising. Like, we got, we got hand raisers in here. I see you. I see you every Sunday. I have no problem with it. I think it's exciting. I'm a hand raiser. But, but I remember when I, was a, when I was a kid, my friend, Trey Chancellor. Hey, Trey, if you're listening to this. Hey, um, he's my best friend growing up. And he was, like, he was like, hey, I want you to come to my church. I want you to come to my church. And I was like, okay, I'll come to your church. Now, I'll, I'll listen, I, I grew up in a hyper-charismatic, like, everybody had a flask of oil and a tambourine church, right? Like, we were, listen, it didn't matter, y'all, okay? Like, it didn't matter. Like, like, if the power was out, we were going to have church. It did, like, one time, legitimately, the power went out. Everybody went home, got their flashlights. Everybody got their, got their like, we had, like, people with propane lanterns. I'm like, how safe is this? And we still had church. Like, it was crazy, okay? But we, like, we were on fire. Literally could have been on fire, but we were on fire. And, uh, and, and, and so, like, we, we would worship. We didn't have to have music. We, we were just, it was exciting. It was, it was there. And, and it was probably a little crazy, okay? I, I'm, I'm almost sure that Jesus was probably like, you guys need to calm down. Like, just chill a little bit, right? Um, and, and so he was like, I want you to come to my church. And I was like, okay. And he was from a Baptist church. And, and, and listen, I, I love Baptists. I, listen, I, I proclaim that I'm, I'm kind of a Bapticostal, right? Like, he was like, I want you to come to my church. And so I went to his church, I went to his church, and, and it, was, it was Baptist, but it was like, like, like old school Baptist. And so I'm thinking, it's going to be a party. And it was more like a funeral march. Like, like I remember they started singing, and everybody's singing, and I, I started feeling the spirit, and I was just going to raise my hand. All of a sudden, I felt somebody grab my arm, pull my hand down. I was like, well, that's the Holy Spirit. And I put my hand up. And it was my friend. He was like, dude, don't do that. I was like, why not? Yeah, y'all remember, y'all, y'all been to these churches, right? Like, you got the person that does the one arm, and then you got the person that does the two arm, and then you got the kind of person that carries the TV. Y'all, y'all have seen these, right? Like, just carrying the TV, just keep it right there. But you got the, you, you got the, you got the hand raiser. And, and, and here's the thing, sometimes, sometimes, uh, we can we we may be able to raise our hands, but our, but our hands aren't connected to what's really happening in our heart because we can show up at church and just put on a show, because it's just about being seen sometimes, and and this is what this guy was doing. He he ran up to him and he said, "Good teacher." Another version of it said, good, "He said, Master or Lord, um, what must I do to inherit eternal life?" And 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 here's the thing. This guy, like, if ever, on the outside, everybody looked at him and thought, you know what, he has everything. I mean, he was known as the rich young ruler. I mean, he was the guy that, like, if anybody was close to God, man, it had to be this guy because, I mean, look at all his wealth. And yet, even though he had all these things, even though he had the newest iPhone, it still wasn't enough. And so he comes running up to Jesus, and he's putting on a show. Have, have, have you ever met somebody putting on, like, just a show? Like, they show up, you know, maybe a sporting event, or um, I'm trying to think of a, oh, I got a good one. Uh, ladies, ladies, how many, how, many, how many ladies in here, over the past, like, 2016, like, right around 2019, and it's kind of gone down, you know, like, what's he talking about? The evolution of the eyebrows. I'm gonna get in trouble, Anna. <laughs> like, like, eye, like eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows. Let, 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 me t- let me tell you something, ladies. This is, this is a true story. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tell you. Like, or, or like my mom, she's real big into the eyelashes. Like the, the eyelashes, y'all you know, the super glue them under your eyelids. I'm like, oh my god. Like that, like, like that's super glue. That's not that is. That's super glue. But, but let me focus here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know why you do that, ladies? You don't do it for us, because guys don't care. Like, like let, me, let me just kind of help you. I've never met a guy, I was like, like, I walked up to him, he's, he got married or whatever, he's dating a new girl, I'm like, hey, bro, how'd you meet her? Like, how'd y'all get together? He's like, man, she walked by, and my eyebrows were on fleek. <laughs> I thought, I gotta get with her. Look at them eyebrows. 
Never happened. Never happened in the history of all mankind. And, 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 and like, like, now here's the thing. We would know, like, go ahead and do it. I don't have a problem with it. But I, like, we would notice if you were missing one, right? Like, was, what's wrong with you? Or if you didn't have any, have y'all seen the picture of people with no eyebrows? That is scary. Thank God for eyebrows. We'd be some weird looking folk. Uh, but, but, but here's the thing. You, you don't do that. You don't do that for, for the guys in your life. You do that for the ladies. So you'd be like, oh my God, da, 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 da. look at your eyebrows. They're so pretty. Right? And, and here's the thing. Uh, we, it's, it's putting on a show and we all do it. We all put on a show, and, and, and the issue that kind of crops up in our lives is when we get too, too busy putting on a show. Y'all remember the air guy, the guy, it was the, kind of the Holy, when we did the Holy Spirit thing, you know, those, those advertisement men, they put outside of stores, and they're just like all over the place, you know. Um, sometimes we, we can be like that, but it's not connected to our heart, and this is kind of where this guy is like he's putting on a show he's running up to Jesus, he's calling him master, he's calling him teacher, and he's asking, what must I do? To inherit eternal life. Sometimes we put on a show, and what we have to do is, is understand that when we're putting on a show, what we're really saying is something's missing. That's what we're saying. Now, I wanna, I wanna, I, I just I just feel like the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna just kind of follow the Spirit here. Sometimes you show up at church. This isn't even in my notes. I'm gonna this something the Lord's talking to somebody, so I need you to listen. Sometimes you show up at church. You ain't feeling it. It could be it could be anything. Be something going on in your life at home. Maybe maybe you're the couple that fought on the way here, like you're driving. Don't look around. Just just keep your eyes forward. I can tell who you are. Like just so you know, like I see you coming on the parking lot. Like, like when you're always like if you're always talking out of the side, which we get home. We'll talk about this later. Like that, right? But, but maybe, maybe, and you show up, and you're like, I don't, I can't do this. Like, you, you look, everybody else is, you're, you're just like, I can't do it. Everybody else is into it. I just can't get into it. And, and let me tell you something. There, there may be a place where, like, when you first got saved, it seemed like it didn't matter. Like, let me tell you this. When I first got saved, it, it didn't matter what kind of music it was. Yeah. I, in fact, I grew up in the kind of the transition there with the church where, like, like worship music, like the worship music we sung like this morning would have been a heresy in the church I grew up in. Like we would have burned the drums. Like that's what we would have done. It would have been like, no, you know. Uh, we, only had, we only had one beat in our church. It was, you know what song that is? I do because I played the drums. Some glad morning when this life is over. Oh, y'all remember that song? Fly away. That's, like, those were the songs we listened to. And if you'd have brought some of that in, like, but and, and, but I remember when I first got saved, I, like I kind of I had my 1999 Wow disc, and I was kind of like worshiping Jesus with that. But then I would walk into our church service where we would be singing songs from the 1800s, and let me tell you something, I would worship to that. It didn't matter because my heart was connected not to the music, but to the one the music was about. Come on. And, and I think sometimes what happens is when we feel like, man, I, I just can't feel this, I can't sense this, something must be wrong with me. And, and let me tell you something, oftentimes it's not that there's something wrong with you, there's something going right with you. That sometimes God will allow you to get to a place where you don't feel the doodads. Where you walk in and you have a very surreal look at what's going on around you, and it's called maturity. And listen, it doesn't mean you should run it means you should press forward because once you get to that next level in him, and let me just tell you, sometimes God will let you kind of walk through that dry season because he's going to show you another level of who he is and who he can be to you. And so well, I, I just want to share that with you. Don't give up. Like if you're showing up, and, and listen, maybe it's, maybe it's somebody, maybe it's me. You're like, I just can't get behind this preacher. Listen, I'm not the one that saved you. I mean, look at me. Serious, right? Like, 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 like. Don't, don't, don't miss out on what God's wanting to do in your life because of someone else, or because of something else, or because of that that fear you're walking in, or or maybe it's that bill due, or maybe it's a sickness diagnosis. Don't let that stand between you and your connection with God. Okay, I just wanted to share that. I have no idea where we we're going. Okay, so so he walks up and he says, teacher. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus kind of says this. He says, why do you call me good? Jesus asks, only God is truly good. And what he's saying here is like, you're going to call me good? You're calling me God? That's what you're trying to say? You're calling me God? You think you can follow me? 
You, you, you want to you wanna follow me? You're going to call me? You, want, you really want eternal life? And, and then he just kind of left it alone, and then he says this. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. Now, this is interesting. I love this. To answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. And you should honor your father and mother. Now, when Jesus said these words, he said this about the commandments, everybody in the room, everybody in the crowd, even the rich young ruler, his mind went back to Moses when he was on the mountain with God. Now, this is not a trick question, so don't freak out. How many, I want you to listen to me, this is fascinating, how many people or excuse me, how many commandments did, like the original commandments, how many did God give Moses? How many? Ten. That's right, that's right. Not a clear question, not a clear question. It, but yet, when we read this, Jesus only mentions six. He only mentions six. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. And so if the rich young ruler is like, he's got his like Ten Commandment notepad, he's like, okay, I got that one. I got that one. I got that one. I got that one. But, uh, wait. What about the other four? And, and, and so I, I did some studying on this. Thing. I want you to listen to this. It's incredible. The first four commandments that God gave the children of Israel have to do with our relationship with God. The last six have to do with our relationship with each other. Which tells me that if we're going to be a church that people love, then we have to take the commandment of loving others seriously because Jesus did. Come on. Listen, Jesus took it seriously. He said, you want to have eternal life? Start by loving your neighbor. Start by loving each other. And listen to this. We're working on it. There it is. Teacher, I love this part. Teacher, the man replied, I have obeyed all these commandments since when? I was young. Now, Hold on a second. Let me, let me kind of just ask, let's just ask like a real question this morning. Can we do that? How, how many of y'all really believe this guy? Like, like he's obeyed all these commandments. Like, I, 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 in other words, I'm perfect. Look how blessed I am. Look at my new Sony Walkman, right? Like this, look how good I have it. And, and because I have these things and because I'm so blessed, I must be doing something right. And I've kept all these commandments. How many of y'all know he didn't really keep all these commandments? Come on. Did he? Yes or no? And neither do we. Neither do we. In fact, none of us in here have been able to keep all the commandments. I mean, I ain't never murdered nobody, Pastor Zach. What are you talking about? I mean, come on. Well, let's, let's talk about these commandments. Can we do that real quick? Let's go back to my last slide. Let's look at this. You must not murder. Anybody in here ever do that? Like, seriously? We just need to know? No? Okay, good. Uh, I was at a nervous point. Everybody was like, <laughs> we love you. Like, hey, Jesus redeems. But that's scary. Uh, you must not murder. But yet, Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, said that if you hate somebody, it's just like you murdered them. You ever, you ever, you ever, listen to this. This is, this is difficult. And, and, and here's the thing. You got to ask the question, why was Jesus so serious about this love each other's thing? And the reason is, is because loving people, can we be honest, is hard. Come on, loving people is not easy. People, listen, I, I promise you, if you haven't met anybody, and, and by the way, if you're the person like, oh, I love everybody, you are the person for everyone else. Just say, that's how that works, right? <laughs> like, oh, I can't think of one person that I hate. Well, that's because it's you. Look in the mirror. Uh, here, here's my point. Like, like, 
all of us struggle with loving people. In fact, I'll tell you this story. Uh, I wouldn't plan on telling this. There's a, there, I won't mention the name of the store. There's one even, I won't give, but I, I, one of the things, I, I have a pet peeve, okay? My pet peeve, like just, this is like my therapy session. My pet peeve is like when I, when, when I go to like a store and there's like 50 million checkouts and like two running, and then, like, the self-checkouts, I love self-checkout. Like, I, listen, I, the people that complain about self-checkout, you're crazy. Like, you don't have to talk to mamaw while you check out your groceries. Like, it's the best thing in the world. But uh, I love I love self-checkout. I, do, 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 let's go. Right? And, and, but, but when you get to the self-checkout and those are all shut down or they're cash only, like, come on. And, and there's only one person in line. Well, the other, there's a store that I go to. And the only reason I go to it is because it's convenient. And every time I go to this store, every time I go to this store, there is a line that it, it takes me 15 minutes or 20 minutes just to get through the line, right? Like, I spend my, I get all my groceries, and, and I'm waiting in line. And the reason I'm waiting so long is because this lady, the checkout lady, is taking forever. She, she wants to talk about everybody's mama. Everybody says, and, and then on top of it, this is what, like, let's, y'all remember, y'all know, like, the card, like, you get the card, the membership card, and you, like, get your discount and stuff, like, and, and, you, and they put on the keychain, and, you know, like, it started out with CVS, and then it was K. Roger, this Kroger, and, uh, and then, like, you got the card, and it gives you, like, discounts, and you add up points and get fuel points with it. How many of y'all got some of those? You got, you got more of those on your key ring than you do keys, and, and here, here's the thing, I don't do it. I just don't. I don't do it. Like every time they ask me, you gonna get your card? Nope. But well, you can save money. You know what I can save? Time. That's what I'm trying to do. Won't you ring me up so I can get out of here? This is what I'm trying to do. Like, shut up and let's move. And and so so here's the, the reason the line's always so long is because she's talking about all this. And then she drops the would you like your card? And and every time, like the people are like, no. And you can tell it like on everybody's face, like, good Lord, get someone else out here. No, I don't want one. And she's like goes into a like a set sales pitch, like pulling out graphs and charts, and like, we're just trying to buy stuff, take our money, please, you know, and, and, and so the other day, I went to the store, I'm waiting in line, and I'm in a hurry, like, I, I should have just went somewhere else, I'm in a hurry, and, and there was no line, like, like she, her lane was open, I should have known better, right, like, she's the lady, like, when you walk up, and you, like, listen, there could be a line at the other cashier, you go wait in line, right, because you know it's going to take you longer to get through her empty line than it is the whole line, and so I get up to her, and, 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 and it's, listen, we, I've had this conversation with her over and over, and it's an argument at this point. It's an argument. It's, it's, it, like, I will go, you got your card yet? No. You don't got your card. Well, you should have your card. And I'm like, when are you going to go see a plastic surgeon? You know, I didn't say that. I'm just saying, I, I, I thought it, and I was like, I, I don't want the card. Please take my money and check out. And, and, and the, the point is that some people are just harder to love. And so when Jesus says, look, if you, you want to inherit eternal life, you want to know what it means to, to experience a life, it, listen, a life that's good enough, Come on, or that is more than you could ever ask for or imagine, you got to start by loving others. And that's why Jesus starts out, here, you must not murder. Um, and as we talked about in Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said if you commit murder, if you hate somebody, it's like you just committed murder. Here's why. Because what the law required, like the law required, grace required that much more. Hear me. What, what the original law required, like you, you must not murder, and, and people could not murder, they may not kill anybody, but they were killing people in their heart and in their minds by how they were treating them. And then Jesus came and applied grace, and grace required that much more. What do you mean, Pastor Zach? Well, before the law, you could, you could slay, slaughter a lamb, you could sacrifice a lamb, and that would cover your sins until the next year. Grace required that much more that the Son of God came down and it had to be a sacrifice bigger than just a lamb in the field. It was the lamb of God. And grace required more. And so, listen, as we follow Jesus and in our relationship with Jesus, when we look at these commandments, we have to understand that grace always requires more of us. And it happens in relationship. So, uh, let's, let's talk about this next one. <clears throat> this is going to be fun. You must not commit... Adultery. Now, I'm not going to ask anyone in here 
if you've committed adultery. Uh, and, and, and by the way, can we all just be, be honest? Like this adultery, it, it doesn't just ha- happen by accident. Like you weren't just walking down the road with somebody of the opposite sex and you tripped and she tripped and look, we had sex. We didn't know what happened. It was an accident. Like that's, that's, that's never happened. Like it was intentional. Um, but Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, you know what he said? If you look at a woman or if you look at somebody, just look and lust at them. It's as if you have committed adultery because grace always requires much more. And, and uh, like, I, one, time, one time I was preaching a message like this, and I asked the guys in the room, I'm like, guys, come on, isn't it hard? And none of, the guys, none of them had my back, and I look like a weirdo up here. But come on, guys, can we all admit that this is something, like you've heard of bouncing your eyes, and in our culture, in the world we live in today, guys, we have to watch our eyes. Come on, how many would say yes? You're right. Come on, I'm honest this morning, Pastor. And, and let me tell you something. You've got to watch your eyes, and, and, and grace requires that even if we look at somebody, it requires that much more. Um, I'm gonna make it really awkward in here. Well, I never committed adultery, and I don't. I don't. Let's talk about porn. It's quiet in here. I wonder why. Here's the thing. Jesus said that if you and, and I've heard guys say this, it was the second look, right? This is the second look that gets you. Listen, some some guys, look, you you've not even stopped looking away in the first look. And I'm just telling you that this right here, this issue right here is prevalent throughout the church and the world. And we can, we can come to church and we can put on a show and we can act like we have it all together, but we've got a closet full of skeletons. And let me tell you something, it'll never satisfy you. And it will never take you to a place where you will be whole. Jesus brings you to a place where you can be healed. Every time. Let's take the next one. Here, This is fun. I like this one. Um, <clears throat> you must not commit adultery. You must not steal. Now, this is a church. One of the things that I have personally learned, I've been in ministry now almost 16, 17 years, full-time vocational ministry, which means my life has been in and, I mean, consumed with church, church work, and church people. And one of the things that I have learned, like, number one lesson that I can teach you, church, is don't leave anything valuable laying around. But it's a church. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, 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 tables, chairs. I've had an iPod get stolen from me. I've had an iPad get stolen from me. I've had my wallet get stolen from me. And, 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 and here's the thing. I'm not complaining because every time I want to complain, I feel like the Holy Spirit kind of nudges me and says, looks like you're reaching the right people. Yeah, I guess so. It's costing me a lot. <laughs> but I don't think anybody in here would say, you know, that, like you're probably not a thief. What happens to our pens? They're in the back of the seat every week. Where would those go? A bunch of thieves. All right, let's go. <laughs> you must not testify falsely. Testify falsely. Or in other words, one version says you should not lie, right? You shouldn't lie against your brother. Now, now you're in here, and you're like, you know, I don't, I don't lie, Pastor. I'm saying it's something I struggle with. Well, okay, that's fine. Here, here's the thing. Let's say, let's say this morning I've got a table and a scale. A table and a scale. And I, I said this. I, I kind of made this promise. I said, hey, we're, what we're going to do is everybody's going to come up here, and they're going to lay their driver's license on the table and then step on the scale. And if the weight on the driver's license is the same as the weight on the scale, I will give you $1,000. The truth is, I'd walk out of here not owing anybody any money because we all lied. Come on, how many, like, come on, how many of y'all would be honest? Like, you did not tell the truth. Like, let me, let me, like, I didn't tell the truth. I'm just saying, I would love to have that job, you know? Like, okay, ma'am, how much do you, what? okay, right, like that. But, but here's the thing. We, we all, we all struggle in that area. Next one, you must not cheat 
anyone, honor your father and mother. And those last two, let me, let me just tell you, that, that must not cheat anyone. In the original text, it says you must not covet. You must not want something that someone else has. You must not try to scheme in order to be able to obtain what they have. Another version of it says don't covet another man's wife. Like, don't do any of that, right? Like, that's not, nice. but it, let me, the truth is, all of us, we looked at this, and then this last one is honor your father and your mother. We're going to clip this part out because I don't want my parents to hear this but, uh, or my in-laws. But uh, listen, I, I love my family. Don't get me wrong. I love my family. But how many, how many when, you get your, when you get your own place, you're happy because mom and dad got to go home eventually, right? L- l- let me just tell you, this is coming from probably a dark place in my heart, but the past two weeks I've had my in-laws in my home for a week and my parents in my home for a week and thank god they're all going home today <laughs> yeah yeah I, i'm celebrating it's not because i don't love them it's just like oh my gosh i'm ready for you to go listen anybody in the room that's done this that and has never done this dishonor your father and mother and listen i love my parents but there were some times this last week and i love my in-laws and he did a great job preaching but there were some times this last week where i was like oh my gosh why are we not going home yet we already have three of them number four is not that difficult y'all can leave right <laughs> anyhow um <clears throat> my therapy session right all right let's keep moving um so teacher he replied i've obeyed all these commandments since i was young in other words i've got it going on and, uh, and Jesus, he, he begins to list this out, and, and he says that he's obeyed all these, but here, like, we all established he didn't tell the truth. This guy lied to Jesus. Come on. Like, that's, that's a big deal. And, and so we all would agree that this, this guy, is, he's not telling the truth, yes or no. Yeah, but we, we do the same thing. And we have to understand, like, this guy's putting on a show, and he's looking for eternal life, even though he's pretending that he has it all together. And let me tell you something. Something was missing because what the world was offering him was not good enough. His wealth was not good enough. His status was not good enough. Everything he had in his life was not good enough. He was still looking for something more. Next verse. Looking at the man, I want to lay this out. Please listen. Looking at the man, listen to what it says. Jesus felt genuine love for him let me let me let me just kind of walk you through something really quick and then i'm going to close but but everybody in the sound of my voice we look at this and and if let me let me just kind of help you if maybe you grew up in the church environment like if you if you lied to like your sunday school teacher or your pastor and they found out about it how would they treat you oh come on it would be terrible right like, like, like if, you, if you did something wrong, like, how, how could you? Why would you do something like this? And, and here's my thought. Like, Jesus knew this guy was lying. And my thought was, like, like, I grew up with this kind of view of God. This was my view of God, is that God was mad at me. Come on. Because I was a sinner. And I was, I was gross. And at night, in my bed, under my blanket, when nobody was around, at the age of five and six years old, I would take my finger and I would put it in my nose, pick my boogers, and eat them. And I knew that God had to hate me for that, right? Come on. And, and, and this was my view of God is that God was mad at me. And, and he loved me because he had to, but he really didn't like me, right? Because I was so messed up. But then you see this point in this view of Jesus where Jesus was just lied to by the guy, this rich young ruler. And Jesus' response was not anger. His response wasn't correction in the moment. His response was love. Was love. Now, he said this. Looking at him, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Can I, can I tell you that Jesus loves you? I think sometimes we forget to say that, like in church. But, I, but last night, uh, I got to thinking about how, listen, Jesus, he, he does love you. And, and it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you did before you showed up. Can I tell you the reason you're here isn't by accident? Can I tell you that the reason you're here is because he loves you and he's drawn you to himself so that he can 
so that you could hear this message that maybe you're unsatisfied with where you're at right now in your walk with God or maybe right now you don't feel good enough but can I tell you it doesn't matter how you feel because it's never been meant to be a walk of feeling it's a walk of faith and Jesus loves you as you are right now where you are and he takes you from where you are to where you need to be he loves you he loves you he loves you he loves you but but here comes Everybody take a deep breath. This is kind of the hard part. You ready? This is going to be a little hard for us, okay? He says, there's still one thing you haven't done. Now, here's the question. Do you think there was just one thing this guy hasn't done? Like he got all those other ones right? We've already established he didn't. He was probably lying about that. So what was Jesus doing here? Well, I, I, I looked at it, and, and what I think Jesus was doing is what he does with every single one of us in our relationship with him. He says, there's still one thing you haven't done. Go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. Now, we know he was messed up. We know he had fallen in all these other areas because we're all messed up. And we've all fallen in these other areas. And he's talking about this one thing where, and, and where like, look, there's one thing you haven't done. There's just one thing, one thing. Can I tell you, God, like Jesus, this is how he deals with you too in your relationship with God. There's a scripture, I don't have it right now, but I, I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. There's a scripture where the children of Israel are about to take the promised land, right? They're gearing up for war with giants and Philistines. And like, this is a, this is a moment, right? Like this is a big deal. And they are, they are excited about the war. They're excited about receiving their inheritance. They're taking back the land that God had promised Abraham. And so they're, they're getting fired up and, and here's their plan. They're going to go in. They're just going to like, like, like just, I'm trying to think, I don't know. They just went to war. What's the Carpet bomb, that's it. Well, they're just going to go in and carpet bomb all those nations, go in there and take the land, and they were, they're like fired up about it, right? And, and we were all this way. Y'all remember that? When we all, like when you first got saved, man, there wasn't anything going to stop you. You were excited. You were fired up. You were ready to take the land that God had promised you. It was, it was exciting. But then maybe you're one of those that you tried, like to do it all at once, to be perfect all at once to get it done all at once, and when you tried to do it all at once, you felt flat on your face all at once, right? Come on, we, we've done this. I've seen people do this. I've done this. Where I'm like, I'm going to conquer, and I, I'm, I'm saved. I've got Jesus. I, I can do this. And then you find yourself tripped up and falling because here's the thing. Jesus knows that we're limited in our abilities. And so in this scripture where the children of Israel are getting ready to take the land, God kind of comes in, and he's like, listen, guys, I know you're excited. I know you want to take the land. But if, if I gave you all of these kingdoms all at once, it would destroy you. Not that you couldn't conquer it. And then he says this, but the wild animals and the beasts of the field would overtake you because you're not ready to inherit everything that I've had promised. It's going to take time for you to get there. And this is what he said. I love this phrase. It's one of my favorite phrases in the Bible. He says, you're going to take the land, but you're going to take it little by little. You ever seen an inchworm? This, this is one of my favorite like things to compare the scripture to is because it's like our walk with Jesus oftentimes is like an inchworm. It's little by little. It's one step at a time. And Jesus knew that this young man had possessions. He knew that those he didn't just have possessions. Possessions had him. Come on. He didn't just have money. Money had him. He didn't just have things. Things had him. And so Jesus immediately deals with the number one thing that had his heart. Because let me tell you something. Jesus, he's not just after your things. He's not just after like trying to make you live a boring life and just muddle through. Listen, God has a huge plan for your life. And he's after your heart. And if there's anything between him and your heart, he's going to deal with that thing first. And this is what he said. Little by little. I'll tell you this story. And when, when I was a kid, um, I, had, I had some, some issues growing up. And I won't get into all of it. God healed me. It was great. But when I was a kid, one of the things that, that I did terribly was I would shuffle my feet. 
when I would walk. My parents told me I would shuffle my feet. And the reason I would shuffle my feet, it would make this, I would literally wear the, the ends of my shoes out. And the reason I did is because I could not hear me shuffling my feet because I had hearing issues. And so when I would walk, I didn't realize that I was dragging my feet, but I would shuffle them. And, and so every morning, like at 730, my grandpa, Paul Sam, uh, I'd meet him at his auto parts store right there in Ola, Arkansas, and we would walk to school. It was about a mile. He would walk me and my brother to school. And one day, he, he, he tells me, he, he, I was walking with him, and he kind of nudged me, and he, and he really spoke up, and he was like, look, you, you're walking the wrong way, and we're going to figure it out this year. I'm like, okay, let's figure it out. He said, when you walk, don't shuffle and drag your feet. He said, walk like this, walk like this, walk like this. He said, go heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. I was like, okay, so I got heel to toe. And I'm walking just like this, walking just like this, walking just like this. And I'm so focused on the walk, I wasn't paying attention to where I was going, and I ran right into the edge of a stop sign and split my head open. True story. Here's, I tell you that story because sometimes our walk with God, we can get so focused on trying to do all of it at once, and we're trying to take it heel to toe, and it's big strides, and we're trying to do it all at once, and we're so focused on what we look like. We're so focused on, like in church, the kind of people that are here. Because they're not the right kind of people. I remember one of the, one of the things that grieves my spirit, I still think of this. There was, I was in a church, and we were winning, listen, hundreds of teenagers to Jesus. Hundreds of families coming. We were, the church was in revival. We, it was an incredible move of God. And, and I had this lady come to my office, and she was furious at me because we were loading kids on buses and bringing them to church, and they were getting saved. And, and listen, we're talking four or 500 students on Wednesday night, maybe even more in kids. We were, it, was, it was a phenomenon. We had, I had people out of state calling us, asking us, okay, what's the secret sauce? What are y'all doing? And, and I literally would just say, we're listening to God and we're just doing what he says. And they'd be like, no, 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 okay, I get that. That's a spiritual answer. What's the real answer? I'm like, bro, listen, we're just listening to God. We're just doing what he says. Scripture says that all we have to do is plant. All we have to do is water. He would create growth. And that's what we saw happen. And I had this lady, she was very religious, came into my office. And she was shaking with violence. And and I, I made the statement, she was upset because of all the new people coming on Sunday and their families were coming. And, and she made this statement, she's like, I just don't like it. And I said, I don't, I, I just had enough. And I said, listen, I don't see how you don't like it. Because, like, look, look at what God is doing. How could you not like, how on earth could you be saved and not be excited about seeing people come to Christ? Like, that makes no sense to me. And she made this statement, and when she made this statement, listen, the Holy Spirit in my heart was grieved. She said this, she said, but look at the kind of people they are. She shouted it and slammed my door on her way out. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we'll get really religious being concerned about the kind of people that are here because we want to read the higher echelon and we want to be this kind of church and we want to be the bougie church and we, listen let me tell you something that ain't the kind of church we're going to be jesus said the poor will always be with you not because poor people are always going to be around but he said where i will be that's where those who are looking will be found we are going to be a church that reaches this community no matter what the cost come on we're about lost people that's what we're going to do you know why? Because that's what Jesus did for you. But here's the problem. We get self-righteous. And this is where, listen, can we all just admit, this guy probably had some, it was a little self-righteous, right? Like, I've done all these commands. He's putting on a show. He's done all these great things. But, but let me talk. I just read, I read a book, and it said this. The book said that self, self-awareness is the greatest gift that a person can have. Self-awareness, like self-awareness is, is, is kind of a big deal. And, and we need that in our personal lives, right? Like if you just eat a salad, self-awareness says, let me check my teeth. 
going to do this number, make sure I ain't got no pepper or uh, like green stuff in my teeth. That's self-awareness. Guys, like, guys, when you go to the restroom, um, like, like self-awareness is you check your zipper 342 times before you walk out on stage because you don't want to be like, howdy, everybody, and, you know, barn doors wide open. Like it's self-awareness. We all, listen, self-awareness is a gift, but, but here's the problem. If we don't, in, in church, in church, if we don't have self-awareness in the church, we'll become self-righteous quick. Self-awareness in the church is, I recognize that it is by the grace of God that I'm saved, and I'm no different than the drunk on the street, but yet for His grace. Come on. Or I'm no different than those kind of people, come on, that the church is reaching, because I recognize that I too have failed. Come on, self-awareness says I'm not good enough and I need Jesus to help me. I need Jesus to save me because I've failed. That's self-awareness in the church. But if we don't have self-awareness in the church, we'll be self-righteous. And we'll say things like, look at the kind of people they are. And we'll say things, well, I just don't like it that way. And we say things like, I, I'm not happy with these people who are coming, and I don't know anybody, and this makes me uncomfortable. But what in the world, when did we think that church was ever about us and not about what Jesus sent us as the church to do, which was to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus? He still saves, he's still alive, and there's power in the church. Come on, that's what we do. I'm playing around too much, let's keep going. He said, there's still one thing you haven't done. Go sell all your possessions. And give the money to the poor. Now, I've read this, and, and people have misinterpreted this scripture. To attack rich people, right? To attack people with money. And, and normally it's a college student, right? Because college people, students are all poor, right? Come on, let's be honest. And they'll always say, well, this means if you're rich, you're a sinner. But that's not what Jesus was saying at all. Because, again, I want to remind you, Jesus was after, this was a heart issue. And, and this is what he said. There's one thing, and let me, let me tell you something. For most of us, right now, in your walk around here, we call it next steps. And it's one thing at a time. Can, can Sound Booth put on just some, some light music? I'm about to go into prayer for somebody. I feel like the Lord wants to talk to you. It's, it's one step at a time. We call it next steps. And, and here, here's what that means. Around here, we just say, everybody, no matter if you've been in church for 30 years, or you just got saved 10 minutes ago, everybody in the room has a next step. And it's, listen, it's one step at a time. Just one step. Because, listen, if, if God gave you everything all at once, it would destroy you. It, in fact, I've heard it said this way, if God showed you what his plan was for your life, it would be so great, it would freak you out and you would run the other direction. This is what he was telling this young man, there's one thing, he wouldn't, he, listen, because this young man, his heart was captured by his stuff. But he had gotten to a place where the things he had was never enough. It's never enough. Can I tell you there are some things in your life that just are never going to be enough? It's, if it's standing between you and Jesus, let me tell you something. It's never going to be enough. And you've got to get that out of the way. And, and listen, don't be overwhelmed. Oftentimes we get overwhelmed. We're like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't feel, let me, let me tell you something. You can do it. If he's dealing with you about it, he'll create a way for you to move around it. You, listen, it's just one step at a time. And, and if you fall down, can I, can I tell you as the pastor of this church, I've fallen down. Good Lord, I fell down two or three times this week. Let me, let me just help you. If you fall down, get back up. Well, I, don't, I feel alone. You're not alone. You're in a church. Reach out to somebody. We're here for you. The problem is we think we can go it alone. And, 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 and you know what? There's some, maybe you're here today and you're like, good Lord, if anybody knew about that. Yeah, you know the thing that is a secret, whatever that is, if that's standing in your way. And this is how Jesus deals with us because he'll say, hey, I want to I talk about that right there. Like we get saved. And, and like, can we all be honest? Like, like eternal life rocks. Like, that's, that's a good thing, right? Like, like, I don't think anybody in the room would be like, no, I'm good. I've got enough. Like, no, everybody in the room, like, I want eternal life. Yes, yes, I, I, want, I want that. That's what I want. But, but here's the thing. As soon as you get eternal life and you get saved, then Jesus starts talking to you. Uh, I got a friend. He calls it the second yes. Like, the first yes 
is eternal life. No problem. Yes. But then there's the second yes. The second yes. Look, just trying to think of a way I could ex- explain this this week. And, and, and since we just had a newborn baby, Pastor Kara wasn't here. She's going to be back next week leading worship again. Y'all excited about getting Pastor Kara back? I, uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait for you guys to meet our new baby. His name is Wilder Samuel Praise Kaufman. And he is, I'm telling you, he is just a blessing. But when we first got married, can I tell you, like, the first yes with Kara, like, do you want to marry Kara? Yes. Like, that's no problem. Like, like she's, she's the sweetest person I've ever met. She's super kind. She's compassionate. She's hot. <laughs> like, yes. Easy yes, right? Eternal life. Easy, yeah, yes. No problem. But then she started talking to me about three years in about having these babies. Come on. I want to have a baby. I was like... I ain't got enough money for one of those. Because I didn't. I was in ministry. We were broke. I was making like $100 a week and working for two full-time jobs. Like, I couldn't do it. So there's no way. And she was like, I want to have a baby. I want to have a baby. And then one day, listen to this, the Holy Spirit started dealing with me and my walk with Jesus started dealing with me about having another kid. I was like, Lord, I just don't see how it can happen. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me this. He said, you are denying Kara the calling that I've placed on her life to be a mother. And you need to get out of the way. That's what he said. It changed everything. Listen, listen. It was, it was, it was, I was afraid. Like when, when we found out we were pregnant with Hudson, I was, I was, I was afraid. But we said yes. And I didn't know how we were going to make it work. But can I tell you, the second yes, even though it took me some time to say yes to the second yes, even though it took me some time to kind of just come to grips with, you know what? If God's called her to be a mom, who am I to stand in her way? Somebody needs to hear that in this house. It was the second yes. Once I said yes, and I held that first little boy in my arms, come on, can I tell you it changed everything about me? Just because I said the second yes. And you know what? There are some things in your life that, l- let me help you. God is dealing with you on And he's wanting you to say yes to him. Whatever that is. Whatever that is. Whatever it is that's standing between you and God. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Remember that love people thing? That's a big deal to God. It's a big deal. He didn't even mention the other four because he wanted to deal with our hearts. We love people. Let Let me tell you something. You can't be forgiven. No one ever talks about this scripture, but it's true. You can't be forgiven unless you forgive what scripture says we should listen some of y'all you you've got some things some people in your life that you just need to let it go come on frozen let it go let it go just let it go let me tell you something forgiveness though is hard it's tricky because it's not a one-time okay i forgive them and move on it's an everyday decision it's an everyday decision no i've forgiven them i've let that go and when they come offering you another membership to their card save money and not time you just smile and say, no, thank you. Let, let, me, let me help you. Sin in our lives is the very same way. The first yes, forgive me of sin, yes. Then when God says, hey, I want to talk about that issue. I want to talk about how you act on the weekend. I, w- I want to talk about the places you go and the things you do. I want to talk about your money. I want to talk about your relationship with your family or with your coworkers. I want to talk about what you've said about your boss. Come on. And, and listen, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll try to kind of maneuver around this. Anybody ever do this? Uh, I know I need to deal with that, God, but oh, this over here, this over here. And let me tell you something. This over here is never going to happen. Like God will give you a vision for ministry in your life, but that will never happen until you deal with this right here, whatever that is. Come on. Listen, are you, are you giving up like in the moment what could be more later because you're just not willing to deal with right now? Are you giving up this or that for this? God's asking for your second yes. And it's, you know what it is? It's just your next step. The next verse in this scripture, to me, is one of the the saddest scriptures in the entire Bible. 
Like, like this scripture right here motivates me to do ministry more than any other scripture in the Bible. Not John 3, 16, not the book of Philippians. Let me tell you something. This scripture right here puts more fire under my feet than anything else. Because let me tell you something. As your pastor, and maybe, maybe, maybe like you're not there yet, right? Like, I don't know if I want you to be my pastor. That's okay. That's okay. Let me, let me be your pastor just right now. Can I do that? As your pastor in this moment, can I tell you the calling on my life? Like, I feel like God's come, is to keep you from making the next decision that we're about to read about. It said this, sell your possessions, give me your second yes, that's what he's saying. At this, the man's face fell. What's it say? He went away sad, for he had too many possessions, or in other words, for possessions, his many possessions had him. Had him. Had him. All of us have something in our life that wants to take control. All of us have something in our life that wants to be God. All of us have something in our life that wants to rule over us. Can I tell you, you were not created to be ruled over and be a slave. You were created to be free and follow Jesus. That's what you were created for. This right here is scary to me because you know what? I know a lot of people in church world, this is their story. Because they refuse to deal with this, they'll never get to that. Come on. Because they refuse to deal with this, they'll never get to that. And maybe you're here this morning and you're like, you know what? This just doesn't seem enough for me. It, you know, th- this, is a, this is a common issue throughout church world. Many people go from one church to another church to another church to another church. And the reason they do this, can I tell you why? Is because there's something that's making them feel like this ain't good enough. I know there's issues. Listen, don't get me wrong. I know there's issues, and sometimes you got to push back from the church and go find somewhere else. But I'm just saying that oftentimes we, we have a, pan, uh, like, uh, like a pandemic. We, we have an issue in church where I call it church hopping. And if, if, if I get mad here or if, if the Holy Spirit deals with me to serve here and I get frustrated or I get angry, what I do is I push back. And, and usually giving is the first thing that walks out the door. And then the body follows about six months later. That's usually how it works. And and they'll go somewhere else. And they've repeated the process over and over and over again. And and you know what? They think, well, that church just wasn't good enough. They didn't have the kind of worship we liked. I didn't like that preaching style. I didn't like how they did the music. I didn't like the greeter. I didn't like the whatever. And and, and let me tell you something. Can Can I tell you? This is not about us. This is about Jesus. And worshiping him and lifting his name high. But here's what I can tell you. When we begin to worship Jesus, his presence comes in the room and his presence changes us. Oftentimes, let me help you. Oftentimes, it's not because something's wrong with you. It's because we've refused to take our next step. So here's my question this morning, real easy. What's your next step? Let Let me tell you something. My biggest fear for you as a pastor and as your pastor is is that you would walk away from Jesus and miss out on the incredible life that he has planned for you. Come on. Like, 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 like y'all remember Simon Peter? Like, owned a, listen, owned a fishing company. It was very lucrative. Just made the biggest catch of his life. Was, was on, on cloud nine. Was about to just, I mean, he had everything he could ever want. And he gave up everything to follow Jesus. The rest of the disciples, that was their story. They, they, listen, it wasn't like these guys didn't have anything to give up. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. But because they were willing to give up and say that second yes, I mean, we name our kids after them 2,000 years later. There are cathedrals named after these men. And we're still talking about them because they said yes to Jesus. They made a generational impact. And let me tell you something. There's no doubt about it. Listen, church, we are living in the last days. Let me help you. It, we, listen, it's, it is among us, okay? And, and here's what we have to understand. We have an opportunity like no one in history, throughout history, has ever had before. In fact, I believe Jesus spoke about us. I think Jesus was talking about us when he said, look, I've done some things, but you and the church are going to do even greater things than I've done. Come on. I believe he was talking about us, and here's what I believe. We can, make, we can give our second yes to Jesus individually, get where we need to be with God. 
whether that be in our relationship with others, whether it be in our finances, whether it be in, in, in our faith area or, or maybe the job we work, just say yes to whatever he's asking us to do. It's your next step. Maybe it's just starting to read your Bible again. Come on, it's just your next step. And, 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 and if you'll give that yes to him, let me promise you this. We will make an impact. Come on. We can make our lives count. We can live a life like we never thought possible. But we're going to have to be willing to say yes in the moment. Come on. Yes now. Yes now so that we can experience more later. I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. Because here's my fear. That one day we're going to step into heaven. And what we're going to say is, look at what we could have done. Look on what we missed out on. I don't want that to be your story. And so this morning, what is your next step? What's your next step? Every head bow, every eye closed. Here's what I want to do. If you're here this morning and you have a next step, you have a next step, and Jesus is putting his finger right on top of it, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to pray for you, and I just want you to say yes. I want you to be ready. Listen, forget about everything else that you feel like you need to make right. Forget about like, what is the one thing that Jesus is dealing with you on. Let me tell you a powerful prayer. God, help me. Help me. Help me. Whatever it is, God, I need your help. I cannot do it in my own strength. Whatever it is, whatever the next step is. You know what? He may give you a name of somebody you need to forgive. He may, he may give you some specific instruction when he gives that to you. You know what? You just need to say, help me do it, Lord. Hey, let me tell you something. He will guide you through it. If he called you to it, he'll guide you through it. What's your next step? For somebody in here, it may be substance abuse. This, you, you can't go without it. You need it. You need it. You need it. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not substance. Maybe it's an item. Maybe it's, maybe it's a phone. Maybe it's TV. Maybe it's, it's something that's taking time your time and it's standing between you and Jesus. Whatever that looks like. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe you're in a relationship and God's like, look, that ain't going to work. You got you to do something different. That you can't be around that friend anymore. You got to put some distance. On. Whatever that looks like this morning, I believe God wants to set so many people free. But you've got to be willing to give your second yes. Would you stand with me all over this room? I want to pray for you. Father, as we read this scripture in Mark 10, 22, we read about this rich young ruler who we don't know his name, who, who could have been one of the disciples, missed out on an opportunity because he was afraid to say yes to you. Lord, in this moment, come on, every head bowed, every eye closed, in this moment, if you're here and you're ready to, to give your second yes, it's your second yes. It's, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make the move this week. I'm going to make the call today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start breaking change. I'm going to confess some things. I'm going to stop trying to do it alone and go to somebody I can trust and say, look, I need help in this area. Let me tell you something. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of incredible strength. It's a sign of incredible strength. We're not created to do alone. This is why church is so important. Come on. If you're here this morning and that's you, you're ready to say, your second yes like you've been saved but now it's time for a second yes it's time to you know what i'm committed to doing my next step if that's you i just want you to hand up and right back down come on hand up right back now hand up right back now hand up right back now come on let me pray for you father right now there are those of us who are here today lord they love you lord they, they may walk in maybe some condemnation they don't feel good enough God, maybe, maybe they feel like, maybe somebody's told them they're not good enough and they've fallen and they've messed up. But God, today they're giving their second yes. Today, God, they're like, now, right now, just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, whatever that looks like. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak. What is it in my life, God, that you want to move? What is it that you're asking me to do? What is it? Lord, I pray right now that you would just begin to give them the strength to overcome. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, Maybe you're here this morning, and you've not given your first yes. You've never said yes to Jesus. You've never made him the Lord of your life. Like, like maybe you, he was like a friend. Mama knew him. Grandma knew him. Daddy prayed. And you just kind of rode their coattail into church. But let me, let me just tell you something. It's got to be your personal relationship with him. And you've never given that first yes. Can I tell you, my friend? It's the best decision you'll ever make. Don't, don't walk away. 
Don't walk away. Because this morning you're not dealing with a God who's angry. That's not who he is. He's the God who loves you, who draws us near, and he deals with us one step at a time. And if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you know what? Your next step, salvation, eternal life. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray all together as a family. If you're here, I do this, I do this almost every night with my kids. We pray this prayer. Um, and, and it's incredible. I want to pray it with you. Because that's really what we are. We're a family. We're a church family. And you are, if you're here today, listen, you're not here by accident. God knew you were going to be here. I want to pray for you. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know I need you. I've failed. I've sinned. I ask you to cleanse my heart. Forgive me of my sin. And give me salvation. As I make you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. With every head bowed, every eye still closed, you just prayed that prayer and you just gave your first yes. You just said, you just said yes to Jesus and he's doing something in your life. We, we're going we're to ask you to put your hand up. Nobody's looking around, but we want to pray for you and we want to celebrate with you because the Bible says that every time one comes to knowledge of Christ, that heaven throws a party and if the angels are partying, we're not going to let them out party us in here, okay? One, if that's you, just put your hand up on the count of three. Two, you ready? Come on, come on, come on. Three. Come on, put your hands up. Hands up. Come on, hands are up. One. Any more? Any more? Any more? Come on. Come on, let's celebrate. There's two. Very good. We're so excited for you guys. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let me pray. Right now, God, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our church. God, today, Lord, was a message about, Lord, that the only thing that's good enough is you. Things do not satisfy. The world will never satisfy. But a relationship with Jesus changes it all. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Why don't you high five three people before you have a seat? Come on. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. Amen. Well, hey, real quick, we're going we're gonna to get through some, uh, some, just a few announcements. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to take up some offering. And so as you kind of find your seat, I want to, one more time, I want to mention... Next, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday, uh, my family, Pastor Kara and the kids are going to be here. Who's excited about seeing Baby Wilder? It's exciting, it's exciting. We're, uh, we've always, listen, we always work really hard to protect our kids. And if you want to hold our kid, kiss our kid, love on our kid, wait for him to get older, okay? That's fine. Uh, we're, uh, we're just protecting him. Uh, but we're, we're excited about y'all seeing him. We can't wait for some of y'all mamas to get to hold him and love on him. Uh, he is an absolute bundle of joy. I'm, I'm ready for Pastor Kara to be back. I miss her on Sunday. I'll be honest. I just, I just love